Here we go again. Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag expressed his disappointment following the team's 3-0 defeat to Tottenham at Old Trafford. In his post-match press conference, Ten Hag criticized his players for starting the game poorly, conceding a goal in the third minute. He explained that United had enough players to defend against the counter-attack, but Tottenham's centre-back was able to cross the ball, leading to an easy tap-in goal at the back post. Ten Hag pointed out that United's lack of composure after conceding the early goal caused stress among the players, leading to bad decisions in possession and a failure to keep the ball. Despite some chances, including a shot from Alejandro Garnacho that hit the post, United couldn't recover, especially after being reduced to 10 men due to a red card. When asked how the team can bounce back after two consecutive 3-0 losses, Ten Hag remained hopeful. He acknowledged the mistakes, but insisted the team must learn from them and improve, especially defensively. He emphasized that they need to stop allowing opposing players to run through their defense, which has happened twice in recent matches. Despite the poor performances, Ten Hag reassured that he isn't concerned about his future as manager, as both the ownership and leadership of the club are united in their decision to work together for improvement. He admitted that integrating new players and dealing with injuries has been a challenge, but he remains confident that the team will improve over time. Ten Hag was asked whether he believes the players are following his instructions, particularly after conceding similar goals in consecutive games. He expressed disappointment, but affirmed his belief that the players are taking the coaching on board, even if the results don't reflect it yet. Meanwhile, Eric Ten Hag must wait for the injuries to Kabi Mainu and Mason Mount to be assessed. Mainu limped out of the 3-0 home defeat to Tottenham, seconds after skipper Bruno Fernandes was sent off towards the end of the first half, with Mount taking his place. However, our number seven then sustained a nasty-looking head injury after a forceful aerial challenge from Spurs substitute Radu Dragusin and was escorted down the tunnel, with Ahmad entering the fray for the closing five minutes plus stoppage time. With Fernandes facing a three-match domestic ban, starting after Thursday's game against Porto in his homeland. The Reds will hope for good news on his fellow midfielders. I can't say in this moment, Ten Hag told Man U TV's Liam Bradford after the game at Old Trafford. I have to find out, but of course, when a player is coming off before halftime already, then there are some concerns. Also, I have seen how Mason came off. He was bleeding, so it's clear there are some problems there, and we have to see how they recover in the coming days. United follow up the trip to Portugal in the Europa League in midweek with an away game at Aston Villa before another pause due to the international break. In other news, United manager Eric Ten Hag has revealed why the club is focusing on signing younger players in recent seasons. In a recent interview, he explained that the decision to bring in young talent is part of the club's long-term strategy. Ten Hag acknowledged that many fans expect the club to always sign top-level, experienced stars due to United's rich history. However, he pointed out that financial factors and other restrictions have influenced their choices. Yes, those are the choices we have made in the last two seasons, Ten Hag said. He added that younger players come with great potential, but they cannot be expected to perform at the highest level immediately. We made the choice for younger players, and you can't expect them to be at the top level yet," he stated. The Dutch manager emphasized that building a strong team takes time, especially when working with younger players. While this approach may take patience, the club is investing in the future by developing young talent. Ten Hag's comments suggest that Manchester United is committed to creating a team that will grow and improve over time, even if it means not competing at the very top right now. This strategy is designed to ensure long-term success, with a squad that can compete for years to come as these young players reach their full potential. So, Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag discussed the club's financial challenges, explaining how they've had to rely more on younger players despite spending 620 millions of pounds over the past two years. He emphasized the need for patience as players like Rasmus Hoyland, Kabi Mainu, and Alejandro Garnacho develop. With United's inconsistent start to the season and pressure mounting, Ten Hag is expected to secure Champions League football through either the Premier League or Europa League. Young striker Ethan Wheatley's recent under-21 hat-trick could also earn him more first-team chances, 
In other news, Manchester United winger Ahmad Diallo has shared how important manager Eric Ten Hag has been to his development, even when he's not on the pitch. In an interview with Sky Sports, the young player expressed gratitude for the Dutch coach's constant support and guidance. He's important for me, Diallo said. He's there to help everyone, even when you don't play. He speaks with you to keep you focused during training. Diallo emphasized the importance of hard work, especially for players who are not regularly playing in matches. According to him, Ten Hag ensures that all players are ready for when their opportunity comes, and this focus on training is key to earning a place in the squad. If you want to deserve things on the pitch, you need to be ready in the training, Diallo added highlighting the work ethic that Ten Hag instills in his team. Though Diallo hasn't had as much game time as he would like, it's clear that Eric Ten Hag's support is helping him stay motivated and prepared for his chance to shine in the first team. This close relationship between the manager and his players is crucial for maintaining morale and pushing for success on the field. For Ahmad Diallo, the guidance of Eric Ten Hag is a key part of his journey at Manchester United. On other hand, Ahmad Diallo has big dreams for his future at Manchester United. In a recent interview with Sky Sports, the young winger shared his passion and ambition to win major trophies with the club. I dream to win more trophies with Manchester United. A lot of trophies. Champions League, Premier League, everything. I want to win with this club, Diallo said. The 21-year-old is determined to make a mark at Old Trafford. He described the moment he signed for Manchester United as one of the best days of my life and expressed his desire to continue growing and achieving more with the team. Since joining the club in 2021, Diallo has shown glimpses of his talent and potential, and many fans are eager to see him flourish in the famous red shirt. As he works hard to recover from injury, his focus remains on contributing to the team's success and helping United return to glory. With such enthusiasm and dedication, Diallo's ambition to win the Premier League, Champions League, and more could become a reality. Fans will be excited to see what the future holds for the promising winger as he aims to achieve great things at Manchester United. Meanwhile, Louis Saha has warned Manchester United they will need to be wary of a rejuvenated Dominic Solanke on today match. The Tottenham striker has endured an injury-hit start to his time in North London following his £55 million summer switch from Bournemouth, but opened his account for his new club in last weekend's win against Brentford. Solanke was on the score sheet again in Thursday night's win over Karabag in the Europa League and Saha believes the fit-again 27-year-old is the missing piece of the jigsaw for boss Ange Postacoglu as he bids to shoot down United. He said, I think Dom Solanke will prove to be a great signing for Tottenham. He's a player who is at the top of his game, and his link-up play has really improved over the last couple of seasons. I think he's done really well. Technically, he's really good. He loves to score goals, and he is a player that, although he hadn't scored until this weekend, he was always in the right area. That gives me the confidence that Solanke will score a lot of goals for Tottenham because he's got quality players who will keep feeding him. Spurs scored the fewest goals of their rivals last season following Kane's exit as they missed out on a Champions League spot. However, Saha believes Solanke is ready to step up to the plate and spearhead Tottenham's top four bid this season. I think that Dominic Solanke is the closest like-for-like -like player they could have signed to replace Harry Kane, he said. His link-up play is a massive plus to his game, and it's something that has improved so much over the last two seasons. He's very comfortable on the ball, and he doesn't make bad choices or silly passes. United and Spurs will be hoping to boost their top four hopes with victory today after slow starts to the campaign. Saha added, both teams are looking for consistency. Both teams need confidence. Tottenham are a really difficult team to play against, so I think it will be an interesting game. I hope that Manchester United can come out on top, and I'm expecting it to be a very open contest with a lot of chances for both teams because both teams have some very talented players. On the other side, Manchester United boss Eric Ten Hag has said young defender Lenny Yoro is progressing well in his ongoing recovery program. Yoro, who joined the club from Lille in the summer, was unfortunate to pick up a metatarsal injury during our pre-season clash with Arsenal in the United States. 
The 18-year-old has since undergone successful surgery to fix the issue and was pictured at Carrington on social media earlier this week. No specific return date has been penciled in for the French defender, and the boss was recently asked how Lenny is progressing overall. Yes, he is doing very well, began the boss when asked by Man U TV in an exclusive interview to preview Sunday's clash with Tottenham. It is very pleasing that his rehab is going in the right direction, and I expect him soon, but what I mean by soon is that he is now in the right planning process. He is in the right spot, and he will return as soon as possible into the squad, and then the team training. Yoro's injury against the Gunners was a bitter blow during our preseason endeavors in the US, as he featured for just 35 minutes at the SoFi Stadium. Striker Rasmus Hoyland was also injured in the very same game, with our number 9 having now returned from injury himself in recent weeks. Lenny's progress at Carrington will of course be watched carefully, and we cannot wait to see the Frenchman back in action for the Reds, with patience a key facet to stress. Meanwhile, Eric Ten Hag spoke to the media on Thursday, ahead of Sunday's Premier League match against Tottenham Hotspur at Old Trafford. He exposed six things United must do against Tottenham tomorrow. The first one said that United need to be clinical, not scoring goals enough. That is the problem. That is the key area. We have to score goals as a team. I think across the team, we have the ability to score. That is clear. When you see all the opportunities we are creating, we are not scoring enough. The second one said that it will be dynamic. I think it will be a very intense game. It is always against Tottenham, and I think it is also our style as well. So I think it is going to be a very dynamic, attractive game. Third one, Sayed that, high levels needed. Every opponent has strengths and weaknesses, and Tottenham have their strengths in their philosophy. That is very clear. They are very attacking, but that leaves also space. That is what we take into account that can maybe help, but you have to be very good against Tottenham. We want to control the game and you need the high performance level. We will create again, I am sure, but we need to take our chances. Fourth one said that we need to be hungry. I think every team has this in a season. That is when you play 60 games. Sure, there will be games where you were not happy with the performance, but you are not happy when the opponent wants it more. I think that is the psychology side of football and top football. The team that can manage this the best is the most successful, and we are ambitious, so we always demand from yourself that you have more hunger than the opponent. The fifth one said that Bruno will prove himself again. I think he is capable, and he has proven himself already so many times in the Premier League. He can create many chances. I am convinced he will not do differently. He will find his form. He is already creating chances, but he will make final passes. He will score goals, 100%, and it is just a matter of time. The last one said that, we have turned a corner. I think you have to assess the situation. Still now we are working and we are in progress. We have to sign players, and we made the choice to sign very young players. Like last year, Hojland and Zerksi and Lenny Yoro are players we believe in for this moment, but also for the future, and we have to build them. When I started we spoke about more, we had to make a switch in the dressing room. We have turned a corner, and we have to work with the squad, and that takes time. And of course, that is also not good behavior for me. I am impatient. I want to go straight forward. To be fair, we have also had success in the last two seasons, and we have to work very hard to bring further success. In other news, Manchester United returned to last training session at Carrington as they prepare for their Premier League showdown against Tottenham Hotspur this Sunday at Old Trafford. Under the guidance of manager Eric Ten Hag and his coaching team, the squad worked on key areas to ensure they are ready to bounce back from their recent 1-1 draw against FC Twente in the Europa League. They focus on defense and new additions. With injuries affecting United's defense, Ten Hag placed special emphasis on tightening the team's backline. Key defenders Luke Shaw and Tyrell Malaysia are still out due to long-term injuries, but a few weeks ago, Malaysia started training as it announced by club, and their return is expected after the October international break. In their absence, new signings Matthijs De Ligt and Nusser Mazraoui, along with Victor Lindelof, who is regaining fitness, took part in intense drills to improve defensive coordination. Lindelof, 
who recently returned to training after an injury, is expected to be available for Sunday's match. His recovery comes at a crucial time for United, who have been adjusting to the absence of Shaw and Malaysia. Meanwhile, on the attacking front, players like Marcus Rashford, Alejandro Garnacho, Ahmad Diallo, Joshua Zarkazi, and Rasmus Hoyland worked on fast transitions and counter-attacks, a tactic that could prove crucial against Tottenham's pressing style. Hoyland, still building match fitness after his pre-season injury, impressed in high-intensity drills. His partnership with Rashford is looking increasingly promising, and both players were sharp in finishing exercises designed to break down Tottenham's defense. While Shaw and Malaysia are expected to return after the international break in October, young defender Lenny Yoro remains a long-term absentee and is not likely to be back until November. On the positive side, United squad hasn't reported any new injuries, and the team is looking stronger as several players return to full fitness. With Tottenham coming up this weekend, United are aiming to improve their form in the Premier League, and Ten Hag's focus on both defense and attack during training shows the team's commitment to delivering a strong performance. Overall, the training session was productive, with players showing improvements in key areas. The team is now looking forward to their home fixture, where they will seek to get back to winning ways under the leadership of Eric Ten Hag. Manchester United's training session wasn't just about fitness and tactics, but also a morale boost as the team prepares for a critical fixture against Tottenham. Eric Ten Hag emphasized fluid team movement and tactical drills to enhance United's ability to control the game from midfield. The combination of Bruno Fernandes and Christian Eriksen looked sharp in creating opportunities during match simulation, with Fernandes taking a leadership role in orchestrating attacks. Additionally, set-piece routines were given special attention, with Ten Hag keen to maximize Manchester United's opportunities from free kicks and corners. Bruno Fernandes and Christian Eriksen were the key figures during these drills, delivering crosses and testing various strategies to outwit Tottenham's defense. The team's overall spirit seemed high, with the players responding positively to Ten Hag's tactical approach. Casemiro and Eriksen led the midfield in pressing drills, focusing on ball recovery and quick distribution to forward players, ensuring United can capitalize on turnovers. Again and again, Bruno Fernandes is starting to attract criticism from supporters who feel he should be dropped from the starting lineup. But sources close to Manchester United are indicating to give Misport that it is unlikely to happen. Fernandes, 30, is supposed to be one of the man talisman at Old Trafford, but has not weighed in with any goals so far this season and has just one assist in the Premier League. Focus around his drop-off in form comes at a time when manager Eric Ten Hag is beginning to feel new pressure around his position at the club. Yet whether the boss is willing to drop his captain remains doubtful. United have failed to win either of their last two matches and now head into a clash with Tottenham at the weekend, in need of a performance that leads to the side taking their chances. One of Manchester United's biggest fears has been that they would make a decision to keep Ten Hag as manager, but still be faced with a new rising to sack him just months into a new season. We are not quite there yet, but the clouds are starting to gather over Old Trafford, and if another storm begins, it would be difficult to see how he gets out alive this time. There is no hiding from the fact last season's FA Cup final win helped save him from the chop at Old Trafford. The process of sounding out other managers had begun, and, and it seemed a case of when, not if, he would lose his job, as they conducted a review of his position. Alejandro Garnacho and Kabi Mainu scored the goals at Wembley that ultimately saw their boss dodge a bullet, but we are now five months on from that moment, and there is little sign of real progress. Meanwhile, back-to-back -back draws against Crystal Palace and FC Twente have put Ten Hag under the spotlight. United are mid-table in the Premier League, with a goal difference of zero, and they have failed to win their opening European fixture. This is not a disaster, but they cannot score enough goals regularly and are already six points adrift of the top teams in the division. A clause has been triggered in Ten Hag's contract that means he is tied to United until 2026, but the fact no commitment was made beyond that shows there was still some level of skepticism to how this would all work out. 
His task is to now move beyond this stale week and find a way to get his front line firing. The inconsistency of United has been a problem in terms of turning this team into Champions League material. Last season, their biggest win streak was five matches, while there were two periods where they won three in a row. This season, the successes over Barnsley and Southampton is as good as we have seen in terms of a winning pattern, and now they face Tottenham, FC Porto, and Aston Villa. Eric Ten Hag's in-game decisions are being questioned, especially after Manchester United's recent matches. Against Crystal Palace, the team was in control, but his second-half changes seemed to hurt their performance. A similar issue arose against FC Twente, where United had the lead but failed to dominate and finish the game strongly. Ten Hag often praises the opponent's post-match, but his selection choices are now under scrutiny. Christian Eriksen, who has become a key player since the international break, was visibly shocked when he was substituted after 79 minutes against Twente. Despite performing well, Eriksen may feel too crucial to be replaced, and this caused frustration when he was taken off. This is made worse by the fact that Bruno Fernandes seems to always stay on the pitch, no matter what. In other news, Manchester United's long wait for Premier League ratification over Cheeto Obi Martin has now come to a successful conclusion. Ineos's mission to strengthen the Manchester United Academy has been largely successful so far, and now the crown jewel of the recruitment drive has been completed. Samuel Lucille has already joined the club from Crystal Palace, while James Overy was also confirmed to have joined the club. These deals followed Sekou Kohn who arrived on deadline day from FC Guidars. And now Cheeto Obi Martin is set to finally join United. Despite agreeing to the move in the summer, the Premier League ratification process has been long and drawn out. Yet now, it is all completed. On Friday, the wait for the Premier League ratification process came to an end with Scoop on X and Fabrizio Romano reporting that the deal was now completed. United received official communication from the Premier League that ratification over the transfer of Obi Martin had been completed, meaning he is now considered a United player as we await the announcement. It is added that contracts will soon to fully signed off but a debut is not expected to be imminent, considering how he has missed so much time while this deal was being completed. Therefore, Obi Martin will be given an appropriate amount of time to reach full fitness levels and also to acclimatize, although Obi Martin has been in action for Denmark. Obi Martin instantly becomes one of the highest regarded players in the United Academy, and we cannot wait to see him start putting the goals away. As this news broke, Obi Martin seemingly confirmed the transfer in his own way on his Instagram story. Posting on Friday morning, Obi Martin shared an image of himself with legendary United forward Eric Cantona. The former United No. 7 was shaking hands with Obi Martin in what seems to confirm the move to United for the young striker. Now, we simply wait for images of him in his United training gear and to see him in action for the star-studded academy sides United currently boast.